Welcome to Asset Analysts, the debate game show where the points definitely matter and we take things way too seriously. My name is Josh Johnson, and I'm joined here with my roommates, Nathaniel Jackson. Yo, yo, yo. And Kyle Jenis. Howdy. Stay tuned to find out who truly is the king of pulling random facts and arguments right out of their ass. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today is our bullshitter episode where we're going to talk about the best scientific discovery. Bill Nye is Booyah. the best scientific discovery. This is true. Anyone who's gone to school in the United States would know. I don't know. Do, do you think other schools like watch Bill Nye? Hell yeah. Bill Nye, the science guy. Did, boo. Did anyone boo, else watch? Boo, uh, boo, 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 boo. Uh, oh, no. The what? robot. Tim and Moby. I have no idea what you're talking what? about. Okay, that wasn't a Southern thing. That was a New York thing. <laughs> <laughs> Tim and Moby? Tim and Moby. I'm pretty sure they're still alive. I mean, there's Tim and Eric. They're animated, like, so I hope so. But What about <laughs> uh, Eric, Eric, Eric and Andre? Oh, I see. Okay, no. I remember seeing this when Wait, I was that, younger. It's not a science Definitely show. Definitely did not watch this like, it's in school. It's also not two people. Oh, we watched it in school all the time. It taught us nothing. <laughs> Those are the best science shows. That they just blow stuff up. It's great. Wait, that's pretty much Mythbusters. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go around and reveal what we picked. Uh, this is a BS episode, so uh, Chris will be asking questions to try and find out who was not allowed to do research versus the two that were allowed to do research. Um, so who wants to go first? I picked the spherical Earth. All right, uh, you're already wrong because it doesn't exist. The Earth's flat. True. All right, I'm off the podcast. <laughs> Bye. It's what NASA wants you to think. Yep. All right, no, yeah, Kyle, bet, sit down. I bet he believes the moon landing is real, too. Oh, yeah. Kyle leaves once an episode. Ooh, we should do a, uh, what are we should the make that a thing. most convincing conspiracy theories? I mean, let's be real. There's an obvious one that, you know, we would all... Yeah, there's really flat. Pick. No. <laughs> <laughs> I would, okay, I would, I would get into trouble. <laughs> that, that is not a topic we should discuss. No, we are I, yeah, absolutely... Well, for this topic... Me and Josh would get into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> For this topic, I picked fire as the a uh, good one. A good scientific one. discovery that Confused made Oonga the biggest Boonga impact. Intensifies. Who do you represent, Nate? I represent magnetism. Cap. Cap? <laughs> <laughs> Psych. Well, I'll actually go ahead. So um, one of the things that we did that uh, the audience has not heard, we recorded uh, a whole month of episodes, and it's actually going to be the second month of episodes that is released. But in one of those episodes, uh, we talk about uh, scientific inventions, not discoveries. And the one that I picked just so happened to be the compass. Now, let's let's talk about uh, navigation and how that changed the world, right? Uh once we discovered the compass, we were actually able to uh, travel across the ocean a lot easier. We no longer had to use a sextant. Um, we never, no longer had to rely. Oh, my gosh, Chris, are you a child? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm laughing, too. It's <laughs> we no longer we're had to. Uh, I'm going to talk to my girl about using the sextant. <laughs> <laughs> we're all 12. <laughs> Okay, um, but basically, magnetism, uh, early on, the discovery of magnetism was important because one of the earliest things it helped us to actually do was navigate. It allowed us to travel, to find out where we're going, and where we've been, how to get back, uh, a very important tool that wouldn't work if the Earth did not have, you know, magnetic poles. Um, and that discovery to me, in my opinion, uh, is actually the first big uh, useful discovery um, when it comes to magnetism, right? The, na the magnetism's use in navigation. Um, and then traveling past that, uh, you actually start getting into uh, uh, like combustion engines and stuff like that that actually used uh, magnetism to uh, keep gears together and things like that to actually allow for combustion to happen. Um, and moving forward, we also have speakers. We would not be able to listen to music now without magnetism. There are magnets in speaker cones. Uh, there's also the use of magnets um, in televisions to be able to actually see something. We wouldn't have phones, computer screens, laptops, uh, the internet, because we wouldn't have those things. Computer chips uh, have magnets in them. So, 
What planet are you on, Kyle? I'm just I'm I'm realizing how much stuff has magnets in it. Yeah. Uh, let's go with something very simple. Uh, refrigerators. <laughs> Refrigerators would not be nearly as useful. Now, we would come up with something else, but uh, magnets actually keep doors on refrigerators closed. Um, without them, oh we would have... just The right. act of opening and closing a refrigerator would be a lot more because there would have to be a latch, uh, and it would most likely... It would just Leak. be an extra step. It w- yeah. It, so, so as magnetics- somebody who actually grew up in a household that had a, an older refrigerator, it's, it's not that difficult. Like it's, there is no. It's th- it's a matter of uh, electricity consumption. Which, by the way, we would not have electricity because uh, most um, what is it generators and stuff like that. Uh, me, uh, in mechanical engineering, a lot of those uh, things that allow us to store energy are done through magnets. So the ability to store energy would not be a thing. Batteries would not be a thing, so you would not have uh, automobiles like we have today without magnetism. You have no hard, no original hard drives. Guitar pickups yeah. wouldn't exist. Guitar pickups, HDDs, none of that stuff would exist. Yep. Wow. I you're making it. Re- you're yeah. making it really hard for everybody. I just blew y'all's mind. These minds. guys are well, really. I mean, have to pull y'all, that out. see, you don't think about how much, how many things actually use magnetism. It's kind of. I mean, crazy right. like you you start to look at it and it's like okay well we have magnets on our refrigerator our microwave our dishwasher and our oven okay those would all be used very differently right now without mag- actually our dishwasher might not um it's a, it's an old school latch but um <laughs> yeah our, our microwave our refrigerator and our oven all do <laughs> wait well, the, the door doesn't the, open with magnets on the microwave it doesn't. It has plastic. No, but you have magnets that are storing and converting the electricity to actually be able to warm up our food. He's talking about my, just the actual I rest, technology I rest of microwaves. I, I stand corrected and rest my case. Yep. So, because you mentioned the refrigerator, and what did you mean energy consumption would be higher because there's a latch on the door? No, actually, the way refrigerators work is uh, they're magnetically sealed all the way around, and that's what keeps the cool air in at a higher efficiency. Therefore, oh, okay. more cool air would be escaping, so you, it would consume more electricity to keep things okay. cold inside. That's it, what I mean. In order to, yeah, in order yes. to maintain the temperature. Yes. Okay, because I was thinking about the... And it was, it was a freezer that we had in our garage, um, but it had just a rubber seal around the outside yeah. that would match flesh and was like vacuumed. Yeah. And then the handle itself was like horizontal. And so when you pulled it, it like levered and broke that seal. Yeah. So it maybe not as efficient as magnet yeah. sealing. But it, may, it may seal the same because you yeah, can really that's, jam that door shut yeah. if you have yeah. the latch. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it, it did, it did take better. some force to, to yeah. open it, but... It, but also think about the fact that production of refrigerators with all those extra latches and stuff is probably cost more because it's more parts. Uh, look, I, by no way am I saying stuff costs that more the more metal you put on. The technology mm-hmm. has evolved. Yeah. It certainly has. I just we wouldn't. I don't have know that that jump was like the as microphones we were talking into. Yes, um, refrigerators was just a daily. I know. Use example. I know. It was. It yeah. was not like a. This is a. Yeah. A high impact on our lives. I understand. What's just, <laughs> what? What's the thing that I would. Not assume magnets are in, but they are involved. Mm. Do cars, like, do car parts have any magnets yeah, in there? Yeah, there's quite a few magnets in okay. cars. <laughs> All place. Pretty much um, every screw should be magnetized, every, every, at least. Yeah, every single yeah. speaker. Yeah, that's another thing. Just, you know, now we have screwdrivers and things that are magnetized so that when you're actually in construction trying to get to a hard-to-reach place, the screw like ditches. gets sucked in yeah, by the... Yeah, the screw is stuck and, and magnetized well, you get, to... you get it out with the tip of the screwdriver. Like, I have yeah. magnetic screwdrivers. Yeah. Yeah. Just super useful. That's not even, like, a high-important thing. It was just a useful use of magnetism. Hey, hey Dad. Yes. Hey, Dad, if you're listening to this, I know what I want for Christmas now. <laughs> magnetic <laughs> screwdrivers. Magnetic <laughs> screwdrivers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the set that you have might be magnetized. Actually, I but think it is. You I can, can I go test this? <laughs> can we go test this? Can we go test this? We'll do it after. Yeah, we'll do it later. Um, bonus Patreon. Things that, you know, you wouldn't think of. <laughs> Kyle builds that's IKEA hard. furniture bonus Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of hard to say with this group because we are all engineers to some sort. Audio engineers or, uh, well. <laughs> uh, hey, guys. <laughs> Chris, I was, Kyle I, and I are engineers to some extent. Um, so, I, you know, I, the first thing that I would think of 
is microphones and speakers. Like most people wouldn't think, hey, that uses a large amount of magnetism, magnets. I actually didn't but. think about speakers in all honesty for whatever reason. Just really? never occurred to me. No, nope, yeah. not in the slightest bit. Not. Yep, we wouldn't have amps. I, no guitar amps. No, they just straight wouldn't exist. Yeah. They, yeah. Oh, I mean, that makes sense. Yep. yep. I've well, blown y'all's mind. My brain hurt. Can we just end the podcast there and just <laughs> vote who the beast <laughs> Magnets well, got Kyle's brain stuck. Yeah. <laughs> Someone stuck a magnet to my brain and it just like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> He's just using that to cover up the fact that he didn't do any research. Yep. It's like putting a big magnet next to old CRT TV. That's Kyle's brain. <laughs> yes, that's my brain right now. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, shoot. I mean. Have you made your case? Yeah, I'm done. He's, Someone else should oh, yeah, go. If y'all, we'll let everyone go and then you can ask yeah. more questions. I, I picked Spherical Earth because, well. On the board, it's the last example that I, I wrote. But um, do you mind if I do it as I go? Because I'll forget. Yeah, I will. Forget. Yeah, go yeah. For no, it. I mean that's fine. Okay. Yeah, um, I picked it because it's. I mean, it is an old discovery that has been very hotly debated. Um, I'm looking at you, flat earthers. But it's it's an old one that I I think for people forget how old it actually like began. Like it began somewhere in the fifth century with all the old Greek philosophers and everything. And it much like magnetism i mean it did kind of help spur uh like circumnavigation of the globe and everything like that like using the stars to kind of chart the you know the path that people take and everything like that it's i mean without understanding the proper shape of the earth that was the word i was looking for i mean realistically you wouldn't have like i guess proper like world travel like in understanding how the earth is shaped helps understand okay that my you know my plane has to take off this way and orbit or this way like even like space travel like safely coming down from space yeah they which, account for the curvature it, the exactly yeah it's it's very important to understand like how do i get back to this thing without completely dying or burning up in the atmosphere you know it's it's something that people don't think about when they're like oh i'm finding a plane it's just you know you can't tell on a small scale like that but when you actually think about it, it's like you don't travel the earth in a straight line, you actually have it's an arc because the Earth's okay. A I need to hear. I need to hear something for me. Okay, just make one brief scientific point about the fact that the Earth is round. <laughs> we literally have space satellite imaging that shows the Earth. No, not that. I'm talking like physical science. What do you mean by phys? What are you asking? You know, an example of physics. Yeah, like an example of physics to show that the Earth is round. I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need some of that info. Oh my god, I haven't done physics. I can answer for him. The magnets got <laughs> me all messed up. No, it's got it's got to come from Kyle. If you can, it's fine. I I mean, obviously there's centripetal force at play, because you know that's coming around a, a curve. If you're doing it like on a two dimensional plane, you know, say you're in a race car and you're trying to make a turn, the centripetal force there is at play. There's obviously on that same scale, just in a th more three dimensional, there's force acting. Around, oh, <laughs> you're trying really hard, and I really appreciate it. I yeah, re no, I do <laughs> too. You know what? You you got well, it like, right so there. Like, That's all I need. Like I said, I haven't done physics class in a long time. I did it two years in a row in high school, and the second year I did it, totally just ruined my understanding of physics because that was the one that was actually like calculus based with more of like circles in play. The first one's just trig based, so it's like just launches projectile. And you want to know, what's you the wanna know the easiest one that you missed? He struggles to what? understand spheres. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm the stupid. easiest thing that you missed, you could have said the way that the light bends around the horizon. That's like what Cur I was looking oh. yeah, for. Light curvature. That's almost specifically yeah. what I was looking yeah. for. Or honestly, just the nature of gravity and well, and the okay. way that the stars, well, that's why, that's which why is how they discovered it in the first place, right. was well, astronomy. Yeah. yeah. I just I couldn't put two and two together, but... Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. If you had done the research, you would have been able to do that. So. I yes. did, <laughs> my friend. Hey. Mm. 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 Yes. Yes. I see. Uh. Yeah. So yeah. you are up. Fire. Um, it's actually. It is <laughs> debatable when it was actually uh, kind of the harnessing of fire was discovered and actually began to be used. Uh, some people believe that it was Homo erectus. Um, about 2.5 billion years ago. Shut up, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was big as hell. He's Homo erect. <laughs> so that's actually part of the reason that people believe that is because um, the, the body mass that they were able to build up and the actual size of their brains, um, it, 
and, and the size of their teeth because uh, their teeth were a little bit smaller, their brains were larger, and, and they had more body mass and more muscle mass um, than other steps, uh, steps of the evolution. Uh, okay. Well, Homo sapiens came after them. Oh, okay. So, um, but in order to build that muscle mass, um, they would have had to have uh, found a way to consume calories more efficiently. And so you do that by cooking. Like cooking the food already kind of starts to break it down um, and, and allows it, you to digest it more effectively. It basically starts digesting it before you start, before you actually put it in your mouth. Um, and so it also, uh, you know, would allow them to kill off any bugs at that point. They obviously didn't know that, but they know that somebody eats something the mosquitoes raw mosquitoes came around and then they died. When they cooked their food. Yeah. 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 Um, and so that's part of the reason that, that people think that it was there. Um, they haven't quite determined whether or not people were actually constructing their own like campfires um, or if it was they found a naturally occurring fire from like a lightning strike and, used um, and, and just kept that alive and kind of eternal flame style. Um, Trial and error to see if they could keep a fire going. Exactly, yeah. Or just like always have a torch with you and never let that fire go out so you can then use that fire to start more fires. And You know the Olympics still have that torch. They use it every year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, never it's, going not, away. it's not the original one. Um, no, I think it is. Well, for the Olympics, but I'm talking like Homo erectus didn't have the Olympic torch. That Are you sure about stupid that? Stupid impressive. How much research did you do on that? Uh, well, honestly, there's a lot of people <laughs> that have done a lot of research, and considering it was 2.5 billion or 2.5 million years ago. Um, I wonder if anyone asked that question besides me. If there's a research plan for did Homo erectus have the Olympic <laughs> torch? <laughs> Considering the Olympics was created in Greece, Greece probably. Uh, well, they could have found it somewhere. <laughs> Do you know right. when, at like the, what at year that point in Greece that the Olympics was created? No, the Olympic fire started. No, I don't. But mm. that wasn't. If you're researching okay. fire, you should know. It that. was a little, little more broad than I thought to do in my research. Okay, what but, impact <laughs> does fire have today? So impact that fire has today. So it, it, manipulating fire and being able to control it there um, was the beginning of understanding uh, thermodynamics and the way that that we could control temperature to make lives easier. So what that ended up being allowing people to do is expand across the globe because they could settle in colder climates. They didn't have to stick to, um, you know, the same warmer areas where life began. And so they, uh, because of that initial step and realizing that, okay, well, one, cooking food is good. We've created more efficient ways to do that. It's pretty good. Example is the microwave. Um, and so it, it has led into those things. Heating up water and realizing that there's steam led to the steam engines which were the first kind of motors that... Okay. So it it's more of what it kind of kicked off. And, and because it allowed us to develop larger brains and, um, you know, more more muscle mass and become the humans that we are today. What would we not have today then? If we didn't have fire? If we didn't figure that out. Everything. Good. No, like really, no, like no, we no, wouldn't be see, able... Yeah. No, I knew the answer. I was seeing yeah. if I get you. All right. No, yeah, it's it's... We wouldn't... We wouldn't have evolved past the point where that's apes, why the, apes are currently. That's why the fish have, haven't become intelligent yet. They haven't yeah, figured out fire. Because they can't create fire. They can't do anything. Well, they can do... Uh, I mean, they can't because they're... I mean, SpongeBob fish. made they're fire small underwater. Brain because they're small brain. <laughs> um, but they do have... I mean, underwater volcanoes and things like that. I wonder There's if they hot try. springs. Like, heated water does exist, and you can you know, poach or boil something. Well, they die immediately when they hit warm water, depending on the fish. Well, then you would say that they cooked themselves. They Small can only, brain. They can only Small do it brain. once. <laughs> <laughs> YOLO. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to go into the area of hot water, and I'm going to need you to sit back there and see what happens. If I'm fine, come in. Yep. If I die, don't. I'm going to tie this string to my tail, and if I die, eat me. Uh, it'll, <laughs> be yank, more, it'll be more my, healthy than eating me now. Trust yank, me. yank my corpse back and just... Oh, yep. Yeah. He cooked too much. Yeah. So, uh, in, Do you have in, anything else to say about the state of the campfire? So the state of the campfire, the, the not earliest... The, not the state of the campfire, bud. Just fire. About, about yeah, anything, okay. okay. 
<laughs> the er- so the earliest. I think you're, like, you're trying to throw him for a loop. <laughs> a little bit. I don't even know what you're asking. <laughs> Shake but, him upside down. So the earliest actual. So I mentioned that there are people that believe that it started with Homo erectus, but we didn't actually see that in like clear signs of direct fires. You know, burn portion of rocks where it was specifically there was a small fire here that was utilized in some way for the community um, and not just this was a wildfire. Um, this was a contained and controlled fire. The earliest signs of that um, are about 1.5 million years ago, and those are actually from Homo erectus, but people believe, and some scientists, it's a contested fact right now about if that started beforehand. Uh, but looking at the way Homo erectus spread out across the globe, <coughs> sorry, across the flat earth, um, they wouldn't have been Ew. able to do that and settled in uh, colder climate areas like Russia um, if they weren't able to, to have some kind of a heat source. Okay. Um, the contested belief to that, that it wasn't fire, is that it was um, that they had been able to invent clothes uh, as clothes or shelters that would allow them to, to stay warm okay. um, without that. So similar to like igloos are a great way of sealing in I'm going to propose a game now that I, now that I have the basis of information okay. from everybody. Okay. Kyle's up first. Oh, great. I want you to relate Sphere Earth to fire. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I'm just going to need a bridge link. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess you use you use engines to fly around the earth, you know, jets run on engines, which are propelled by some form of heat, which is fire. I'm just trying, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm science. I, I was a good science kid in school and now it is all gone. I have no idea where it went, but it's out the door. <laughs> it just opened and just went by. I've gotten as I need. All right. Uh, am I relating to fire or to uh, flat? You're going to relate to Earth. You sh- oh, so easy. Mm. Uh, magnetic poles. I win. You couldn't have given me that <laughs> one? <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to need fire to magnetism. Fire to magnetism? Uh, good microwave. One. And Actually. And I was yeah. going to say any... In-depth com- in me. Uh, so, like Nathaniel pointed out, the uh, way that a microwave works is it uses magnets to bounce the particles around and make them vibrate faster and actually heat up the food. The reason that the microwave was invented was because it was more efficient than using fire. But we would not have come up with the concept of cooking had it not been for fire in the first place. So fire led to the invention of the microwave, which utilizes magnets. You're good. (laughs) You're really good. Where where are we at? I don't want to make my assumption too early. What do you mean? Can, uh, can I, I mean, bonus round this? Can I go to... Uh, I can point mine to Kyle's. Okay. As well. <laughs> so I can basically do his job <laughs> in if, that game? If you, would, if you would like to, I'm, I'm interested. Okay, so the spherical Earth, there's different climates around the Earth, and it's not all based on elevation, but it is based on the largest oh, the fire in our the solar equator. system, the sun. Oh, my... <clears throat> So, all right, bye guys. Because of the shape of the Earth and the distance from the Sun uh, and the rotating nature of the spherical Earth, we see nighttime is a little bit colder, daytime is warmer, and it's all because of the relative location to the Sun. Actually, I would like to propose my favorite conspiracy theory of all time the Sun is cold and the Earth is hot. Why? When you go up a mountain and you get closer and closer to the sun, oh it gets colder God. and colder. And uh. the closer you get down to Earth, to towards the mantle, it gets hotter. I think I just shit myself. <laughs> What's well, because I mean there is <laughs> that, that we're saving that for the conspiracy theory. That's also theory because episode. of that's the my conspiracy theory. The um, <laughs> closest largest fire to us, which is the, the Earth's core. core. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could have just uh, said the Earth's core because that's literal burning balls of. Metals and stuff. Yeah, I mean, you really okay, could Kyle, have said anything, you, and you just floundered. Okay. You, <laughs> oh my, no, no, you double it then. Go ahead. I, 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 just, well, I just made my point. The Earth's core is literally a flaming thing of metals and stuff. Obviously, well, there's the mantle as well, which is just flowing material that moves the plates on the Earth. There it is. Now okay, so you repeated back. the the yeah, point I that s- I made. I was gonna say you got another one. I'm I'm out of ideas. I'm sorry. I'm clearly s- educationally stupid tonight. No, 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 you just didn't prepare. No. I yeah, did. Exactly. No, I did. Have, you just didn't I have time for did. research. I did research. <laughs> I just told a stupid topic, clearly. 
All right. Well, Chris, if you have any more questions, you are more than welcome to ask. Um, I think my brain has tied it up. <laughs> Kyle, so, stop the cap, man. It's not. No, stop it's not me. Cap. It's not me. You're wrong. Well, all right. So we're going to go ahead and end the episode here, and Chris will pick the person he wants at the beginning of next episode. So we will see you guys on Friday. Well, that's it for today's episode. Be sure to join us on the next episode where we will continue to debate as good friends do. Follow us on Instagram and YouTube and stay up to date on all things Asshat and to participate in polls and activities throughout the week based on the themes of the upcoming episodes. We also started a Patreon for those of you who are interested in showing your support in a more direct way. On our Patreon, we have a ton of bonus content, including tier lists, loser dinners, and bonus podcast episodes. We want to continue making content that makes you think, smile, and especially laugh. And the best way that you guys can help us do that, leave a like or a comment, download, and share all these episodes with your friends and family members who you think would enjoy our tomfoolery, our shenanigans, and all those other crazy words that encapsulate our content.